whether she's balling on the court or editing in a computer. Sophia's standards remain high, regardless of the challenge. Even though Arizona blew their 19 point lead, they still set up their kicker Josh Pollock for a potential game winning field goal. Unfortunately for him and the Wildcats, that kick was wide right. From sustainability games to giveaways and even Twitter contests, the main goal for Green Games ASU is simple yet crucial to educate. Thanks, Steve. After a wild round of 32 in Miami, we're here in Portland for the Sweet 16 where ASU will take on number one Mississippi State. And while the Sun Devils have seen a similar Bulldog roster last year, this season's team brings a whole new set of challenges. Go crazy, Tempe. ASU pulls through in the Territorial Cup. 95-88. Zylan Cheatham, Eliyav Gabay, Z are basking in the glory right now. You outscore U of A 11-5 in OT. Why are you so dominant in that extra period of play? And when an opponent shoots as well as U of A did from three, as the fans are loving it, when Arizona shoots the way they did from three, how do you adjust but not overcommit to defend the perimeter? And as you know, this was Bobby Hurley's first Territorial Cup win. How much more does it mean to get this done for your coach? Thanks, guys. Now, Pat, you had two RBI in the bottom of the seventh. They were very clutch. Can you walk me through that at bat? Now, it was the first win when trailing after six. What was different this time around? It's July. It's a new month. Do you kind of feel like a breath of fresh air in this new month? Yeah. Arizona State gets the convincing win at the bank, 75-63. to I'm Eliyaf Gabay with Romello White, Dylan Keenum messing around back there, but <laughs> obviously, Mello, a tough loss to Washington State, but it seems like every time this season you guys have been knocked down, you've gone right back up. Why do you think that's been the trend so far this season for this team? Well, you fought hard indeed, about 60% from the field, and all week, all anyone spoke about was the zone defense for Washington. How were you able to break it? You did get it done, and especially you had quite the night, eight of nine, from the field, it seems like this game was the epitome of how much you've improved this season. Why do you think you've improved so much? Well, the best fans in the country are going to Romello White. Go ahead and enjoy Romello. For Romello White, I'm Eliav. Goodbye, Cronkite News. To talk more real deal, Nikhil, we have our WCSN football experts, Harley Yearout and Chris Gleason here with us. Thanks for joining me, fellas. Harley, I'll start with you. Obviously, everyone knows about the numbers and the accolades, but what has been the true magnitude of Nikhil Harry's impact on this ASU football program? Chris, there's been a lot of speculation about where Harry will end up in this upcoming draft, but what are some mock projections? These next two are for the both of you. First off, ASU's Duel in the Desert comeback was obviously incredible, but what were your main takeaways from the rally? Harley, we'll start with you. Well, even with a Territorial Cup in hand, if you ask Herm Edwards, the season wasn't a success without the Pac-12 title. How would you both assess Herm's first season at Arizona State, starting with Chris? Well, we'll see how ASU's recruiting goes this summer. Thank you both for your hard work all season long. For all of Chris and Harley's content, check out CronkiteSports.com. Welcome to a very special edition of Bird Chirp, Haircut Edition. I'm Elioff, goodbye, and right above me is Carter Aldretti. He's going to give me a haircut today, and we're going to ask him some questions about it. So let's do this. I've been cutting hair for about, I don't know, since 7th, 8th grade. Oh, really? Yeah, so yeah. I've been at it for a little bit. Where did it start? Well, when I was younger, my dad used to coach baseball and all of his players used to cut hair and I kind of looked up to them and I had a fro when I was younger and finally got my first haircut by one of his players. At first it was me and I used to mess myself up and then my buddies that were really close to me would let me do it. Then I got pretty good and, you know, clientele got a little bit bigger. Next thing you know, word got around town and just went from there. So how long would you say it took people to really trust you, besides like your closest friends? When I got into high school, I had people coming around that would say, hey, I heard you cut hair, like, can you get me? And I'd say, yeah, I got it. But middle school, it was kind of iffy. Mm -hmm. High school, late high school, like my senior year, and obviously college now, it's, I trust myself more. What are some of the, the hardest ones that you've done that you're just like, ooh, I, I could get a redo on that one? People with like comb overs, like the scissor part of that is kind of tough. And I think like lately I've been better with scissors just because like I got like a scissor lesson back at school from a guy that came in. And growing up, I never really used scissors. I just used to buzz people's heads. Ooh. And now I got a little bit more finesse with it. So there you go. Yeah. He's working on his game on and off the field, people. It's, it's you got to be well rounded and everything. <laughs> right. So when it comes to the Firebirds, who have you cut? Uh, I cut Matt Frazier all the time. I just cut Phil before you. 
uh, Andrew Martinez comes a lot. Comes a lot. Um, I've actually cut Coach G and Coach Q. Who would you say needs a haircut but hasn't gotten one yet? My Oregon boys. <laughs> KY and Steer, man, they're hurting right now. <laughs> but they're just like, oh, I need to grow it out. Because you know they're going back to the blizzard. Do you actually ever think about it as a backup career? You know, if everything goes right and like my life plan works out, I'd like to have some shops open as I'm still playing. So when I'm done, I could just retire to that. But I mean, obviously, got a plan for the worst. So I wouldn't mind owning my own barbershop one day. I like cutting before games. It's like soothing. It just relaxes me. Gets my mind off the game a little bit. All right. Well, we did it. Thank you to my guy Carter. Got it. No <laughs> Looking clean. I'm. Sh I mean, I can't even see it, but I'm not even doubting it. So for Carter Aldretti, I'm Eliyav Gwai. This has been OPN's Birdshirt Haircut Edition. I had to learn a new language, and uh, the sh it was a real shock about culture because, uh, wow, this is just a whole different world. For Arizona State senior forward Sofia Elenga, learning English didn't just help her communicate with teammates, but in her chosen career path. Elenga is pursuing a sports journalism degree at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication. If you can imagine like English as your second language and you're a journalism major, you know, having to write quick, you know, like that is really, really hard for her. When people were talking to me, I was first translating in French, and then I was answering in French, and then I was translating in English, so it was a long process. In a way, it's teaching somebody a new language, the new language of production and creativity, and that, it can be a challenge. And Sophia didn't know anything about cameras coming in here or editing, and to see where she's at now, it's quite impressive. Sophia's journey to ASU began in a small French town called Nogent sur Wise, about an hour north of Paris. I left home when I was 12 for basketball, so I directly went to a bigger city. It was very different and I think it really helped me to kind of grow, grow up because after that I moved to another city who was further in the, uh, in the south and very far from home. That city was Bourges, where she only got to see her family during holiday breaks. While that was difficult, moving to the U.S. to pursue a college basketball career at Cochise College in Douglas, Arizona was a whole other ball game. Knowing that my family was not here with me in the, in the country, I mean, uh, honestly, I feel really, really lonely. Also because my friends was not there neither. And uh, it's, it was mentally, mentally was really hard. I'm not going to lie. The first year, the couple months, I was crying every single day. Sophia eventually adjusted to American life at Cochise under former Sun Devil assistant coach Laura Hughes before joining Charlie Turner Thorne at ASU in 2017. She works hard at everything that she does. She is nice, respectful, caring all the time. In terms of everybody else, I mean, never an ill word, you know, never not there for them. Um, so she's quite the Sun Devil. Whether she's balling on the court or editing at a computer, Sophia's standards remain high, regardless of the challenge. Her drive, man, her drive is like nothing I've ever seen before. She just always goes for it. She does it with a smile. I can respect that in any, any person just who wants to learn more and learn from their mistakes and just wants to grow as an individual. That's Lovely, not bad. Part of Sophia's drive grew out of her mother's brain cancer fight that began when Sophia was just 12, months before she first moved away from her family. Because I am the youngest of the family, all my siblings, they protect me. Like, they kind of keep me like, this is not, you don't have to worry about it. We got this, we got this. So I didn't really get involved. It's just like when you feel like powerless. That was kind of frustrated time, but I know that this is what they want me to do and they wanted to me to do it well. So my, my goal for me was just to take care of stuff. Fortunately, Sophia's mother had successful surgery and still support Sophia from their home country. Meanwhile, Sophia presses on. My goal was to get my education, and at this point, I was like, I don't have any choice. I have to go through it. All the most successful people in this world, I mean, they, they just know how to keep going, you know, and, and handle, like, work capacity. I don't know any really successful people that don't have a great work capacity. She keeps going and going and going, and she finds a way to succeed and get it done no matter what is placed in front of her. Sophia's college basketball career ended with ASU's loss in March, 
but she has one more year of studies at the Cronkite School before she earns her degree. She's weighing her on-court options around the world and in journalism. In Tempe, Eliav Gabay, Cronkite Sports Report. Hello and welcome to a very special edition of WCSN's Sun Devil Sit Down. I am Eli Avgabai and joining me is the one and only women's basketball head coach here at ASU, Charlie Turner Thorne, the winningest women's basketball head coach in Arizona State history. That has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? It does. I mean, it just means I'm <laughs> old, really. <laughs> I, I, I've been here a long time. And it's been a successful time, that's for sure. But I want to start by taking it back all the way to Washington, graduate assistant, wow. Santa Clara assistant, then NAU, and now, of course, year 22 at ASU. When you reflect and think about that journey, what stands out to you? What stands out is just all the people uh, over the years, you know, um, that I've had a chance to, that have touched my life. You know, maybe I've touched theirs a little bit. I mean, when I think on all those experiences, I just immediately flash on the different people. You just mentioned the people that have influenced you. Does someone stand out that inspired you to prepare like that and have that kind of work ethic? Um, Chris Gobrek, uh, when, I, when I went to the University of Washington, um, really our whole defense is predicated on everything I learned there. And it, I've just continued to grow it and, you know, uh, making people work for every touch and just um, outworking people, um, flustering people, all that stuff from Chris Gobrek. So she, to this day, I think I, I just owe a lot, you know, for that opportunity that she gave me. Not only are you prepared, but you prepare for the ladies for on and off the court, for life in general. And in that program, horizontal leadership that you have within this team, how do you prepare the ladies for anything that life can throw them? We want to make sure, you know, that they're managing their time, they're managing their energy, they're managing their emotions, you know, that they're recovering well. There's no multi-million dollar contract for the women in women's basketball. I mean, they'll play pro, they'll do great, but we want them to um, be leaders, you know, in whatever industry or discipline they decide to go into after basketball. And you've mentioned EQ as part of that, you know, emotional intelligence. Yes. So what goes into helping them recognize their own emotional intelligence? Well, I mean, that's a great question. I mean, I think, I think athletes come in and they have a, a really solid self-awareness. So the thing that, you know, you really have to grow in team sports is that social awareness, that ability to look to your left, look to your right and go, okay, and stay connected and, you know, and you really just uh, be on the same page. The mutual respect and sisterhood you have between you and your players is less superior, inferior, and more eye to eye. So what was the process of really developing that? For me, um, being a great leader is, is serving. You know, it's being humble. It's, it's, you know, helping people. It's me lifting other people up and them being the best that they can be. And so I think that's all we try to do in our coaching staff and the people is we just try to serve our players and, and uh, you know, that's effective leadership. Now let's, let's take it to last year and this year. Let's, let's okay. zoom in a little bit more now. Last year, of course, not as much depth or experience with that team, but still made it to the second round of the NCAA tournament. Now the entire roster coming back, obviously a few freshmen that are very talented. So are the expectations higher or are they always the same nationally and conference? You know, that's a great question. I think, you know, we always have very high positive expectations for our team to do well. But, you know, what do we have this year? We have, you know, more talent, we have more experience, and we have more depth than last year. So this year we can do all of that and it's just going to be so much better. But, but um, I like to, to crush people. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, I, yes, I'm just going to say it. I do. I like to win, and um, that's probably why I have, still have a job. But, but I like to crush people. And it goes back to our culture where, you know, we don't care who gets the credit. We just want to win. So you talk about crushing and the dominating mentality, right? But then there's always the side of you have it's all good written up on the walls here at Weather yeah. Up, right? And, and when people think of, you know, slogans and pride, grind, and all that, but then it's all good also. So what's the inspiration behind that? Well, I mean, Toughness is all about being positive. You, if, you're t if you're tough, that means you stay positive no matter what and you get the job done. So it's all good. I mean, that's, that's, that's toughness. You know, no matter what, hey, it's all good. Just keep punching. Sweet 16, twice. Elite eight, twice. Every team is different, of course. But what is the key, do you think, for this group to potentially be that final four squad? It's continuing, you know, to grow their toughness muscle. Because, I mean, to be one of the top four teams in the country, I mean, you just gotta be tough. 
You know, in this game of possessions, we got to be incredibly efficient and consistent on our rebounding and on our taking care of the ball. And then our, shot, our shooting's got to hold up for the whole season. And if we do that, I mean, I think, you know, bring it on. I think we can beat anybody we play. Bring it on, and the journey starts for the women's basketball team against Incarnate Word November 6th on Tuesday, right here in Tempe. Right here so in Tempe. Get it kicked 830 off. 830 tip. 830 <laughs> tip. Get it kicked off the right way. Thank you so much, Charlie. Thank this you. has been so much fun. My uh, pleasure. Well, for Charlie Turner Thorne, I'm Ellie Off. Goodbye. This has been WCSN's Sun Devil Sit Down. With the season right around the corner, I want to talk some Sun Devil hoops. ASU men's basketball burst onto the scene last year with their impeccable 12-0 start, including an upset of Kansas at Allen Fieldhouse and being ranked as high as number three in the country. However, once conference play began, the team dubbed Guard U simply couldn't find the same success for the rest of the year. This season, head coach Bobby Hurley has brought in more unique talent than Arizona State has been used to in recent years. In addition to the already proven players like Pac-12 Co-Six Man of the Year Remy Martin and big man Romello White, you'll see fresh legs with the likes of the ever-athletic and defensive anchors Eileen Cheatham, five-star dynamic guard Lou Gans Dort, and a four-star floor spacing forward in Tayshawn Cherry, just to name a few. Also, with nine players standing six foot seven or taller, the sheer size of this ASU squad is unlike anything the program has had for quite some time, and that will only contribute to Hurley's hard-nosed defensive game plan. And while they made brief appearances in the top 25 last year, don't be surprised if they're consistently a top 20 team this time around. Going into the fourth year of the Bobby Hurley era, these defensive-minded devils are poised to make real noise in the Pac-12. And that's the way it is. There's been a lot of uncertainty with Arizona State's athletic success over the years. One of the programs you never have to doubt is the women's basketball team. Over the last two decades, head coach Charlie Turner Thorne has spearheaded one of the most consistent women's basketball programs in the country. And I had the chance to sit down with CTT and talk about her journey, philosophy, and this upcoming season in a special edition of Sun Devil Sit Down. This might be number one in Surprise. all of sports right here. Nikhil Harry with the what? Isaac <laughs> Newton hates that defining physics right there. The one-handed what, what, horizontal catch? Yeah. I mean, look at that. Co-captain Brinson Pashnuk going around the right side of the ice. A little bit of a dangle and crashes right into the goalie for the goal. He was penalized for that one, but it's still countered for one. This is not Sparta. It's Tempe. Let's see it again. Brinson Pashna crashes in there, and ASU ended up winning this game against Michigan State 5-4. Number two, Trey Holder, 4-3, and his career high, 35 points for Trey Holder. He's also getting rebounds, but you know what? Good on him. Let's see it again. Trey Holder way out for his career high of 35. Top plays at number three will go out to the ice were Captain Dylan Holman right there with a deke and oh, top shelf cheddar. Ooh. Cap, show it to me again.